Welcome back to the show. This is your host, Sir Eros. Kamusta kayo dyan for today's vlog? Okay. We'll go for clarity and direct information. Okay. So, for today's vlog, I'll give you another... Uh, ano ba? Product knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> or another insight na pwede nyong gamitin na maidagdag dun sa portfolio mo. Okay? So, for today's vlog, it's something special because it is a part of audiology na kukunti lang yung nag explore para doon sa mga bago na nakakapanood nito. Maybe in the future, you could actually venture out to this kind of profession. Uh, what I'm talking about is, of course, uh, the use of audiological equipments. So, uh, during our UST days or while we were in school, uh, siguro yung calibration module is more about audiometers, okay? So, uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is because during that time, parang uh, six slides lang yung ating uh, presentation about calibration. So, for this particular reason, uh, nakita ko yung opportunity din doon na parang why not share this knowledge to you ba magamit yung sa portfolio nyo di ba lalong lalo na ngayon hindi naman sa pag ano uh, mas mainam na na maging handa tayo kung ano man yung mangyayari sa ating mga career of course uh, we need uh, to be uh, what you call this resilient during this time di ba so, ano nga ba yung calibration? Okay. Calibration is basically, to keep it simple, is to set your equipment in a certain standard so that you would use or you would diagnose your patient with an accurate and precise results. Okay? Siyempre, kahit pa paano, kailangan natin na accuracy and precision pagdating sa ating testing. So, inside your audiometer, bali... Bukod ang ginagawa ng ating audiometer tuloy, ng ating tympanometer, we basically use our tympanometer to measure the integrity of our middle ear cavity, okay, or yung ating middle ear function, and also to check the reflex, okay. To do that, okay, this tympanometer is using three um, physics, it's physics eh. Three physics, no, three, what is Three uh, theories of physics. Nisip ko physical something, but theory of physics, okay? Para magawa natin na uh, i-check yung ating uh, function ng middle ear. Ano-ano yun? Of course, una is yung acoustic property ng, ng, ng sound. Pangalawa is uh, pressure, air pressure. And yung huling-huli is ang ating volume. Okay? So, yun yung tatlong principle ng physics na involved sa ating tim tympanometer machine. Okay? Um, so, ang kailangan lang natin gawin is during calibration, iset natin yung ating measurement in a particular standard. Okay? So, having said that, three principles, ano-ano ba yung kailangan natin gawin? Una, for the tone, alam natin na ang yung, uh, ang yung tympanometer has three tones, right? Meron tayong low pitch, mid pitch, and actually low tsaka mid lang siya. Okay? So, meron tayong 2, 2, 6 hertz, 6, 7, 8 hertz, and 1,000 hertz, okay? So, yung mga function nun, syempre, depende sa yung uh, pasyente. Talagang binrouse ko kasi ka, nasa isip ko 800 hertz. So, having said that one, kailangan natin acoustic property. In particular, is yung ating intensity and frequency. Okay? How to do that one is, of course, we have here our sound level meter. We'll measure that one uh, using our uh, um, a mastoid cavity 
or our uh, AEC201 cavity, okay? Pero siyempre may modification dahil nga uh, our equipment is grass and stadler, meron tayong ibang coupler na dinidikit nun sa ating sound level meter. Pero nagig alam ko nagigets yun naman yung point ko. Siyempre, if we're using sound, we need to calibrate that sound in a certain dB. Kunyari, ang minimeasure niya is 80 dB and 170 to 100 dB. Kailangan, when you measure it with your sound level meter, na impartia parehas. Okay? Next would be, yung frequency rin. Using our sound level meter, we could actually see there also the frequency of the sound that we are measuring. Dapat congruent. Okay? So, next will be pressure. For pressure, ang pinaka-importante sa ating tympanometer is if it measures or if in your um, interface shows that it will measure 200 decapascal, dapat ma-measure natin yun as 200 decapascal. Okay? How do we measure it? Okay. We measure it through the use of an equipment which what we call a manometer. Okay. So, manometer meron siya negative and positive pressure na kung saan ipapasok nyo yung probe dito sa dalawang tubes na to tapos may readout. Okay. Isa pang kailangan key point na ating titignan is while we were measuring, dapat kaya niyang i-hold yung pressure at let's say, for example, 200 decapascals or 100 decapascal, pag nag ilicit siya ng 200 me uh, decapascal, dapat yung decrease o yung release ng pressure is about 0.5 decapascal per uh, second. So, dapat mabagal na mabagal siya. Ibig sabihin, yung pump mo, is optimized. Okay, hindi siya, wala siyang leakage. Okay, otherwise, if may leakage, of course, kailangan niya siya for servicing. Okay, depende sa equipment. Next would be, our third component would be volume. Okay, for volume, ano ba ang ginagawa, ano ba ang instrumentation ng volume, guys? So, for volume, during our laboratory days, or your pre-odd, para doon sa mga science classes, we measure volume through the use of a cylinder. You're right, cylinder. But for this particular reason, wala tayong cylinder na magmimimik ng 2 ml, 5 ml, and 0.5 ml. Yung ml na sinasabi ko is dependent do sa equipment. Pero ito yung standard na ginagamit for GSI. Okay? So, just like what I mentioned, uh, we could test your equipment based on si sa instrument na kailangan natin gamitin. So, for GSI, we have what we call a test cavity that you could actually see here. Dalang alisin kayo mukha ko para hindi magpo-focus. Or anyway, hindi siya nagpo-focus. O nagpo-focus pa siya? O hindi siya nagpo-focus. Bali here, meron siyang measurement na 2 ml, 5 ml, 0.5 ml, and 0.2 ml. Okay? So, it's a cylinder form. And dito sa ating aparato. Okay, so, kailangan i-adjust natin siya based on this particular uh, test cavity. And then, from there, we would know whether um, sufficient ba yung ating volume na measure. Okay? So, any discrepancy for about point, more than 0.3. Okay? It depends on the, uh, it depends on the measurement. Eh. Pag 5 ml... Plus minus 1 ml dapat yung difference niya. Or 0.5 ml plus minus 0.1 ml. Uh, 0.1 milliliter yung difference niya. And then for... 
2 ml uh, point 25 plus minus yung difference niya. Pag lumagpas doon, kailangan mo siyang i-calibrate. Okay, so that's all for today's vlog. Thank you again for uh, spending time to learn new stuff here. Uh, try natin maglagay ng mga B-rolls para maintindihan nyo lalo yung ating pinag-uusapan. So, that's all for today's vlog. I hope you have learned something new and apply it. Okay, pwede mo siyang sabihin sa resume mo na, oh, yung team. Eh, yung konsepto niyan. Alam ko yung konsepto niyan. Okay? We don't fake it till we make it. Basta naiintindihan nyo yung theory behind it. Learning is there. Alright? This is our Eros again saying we will make the disabled able by using timpanometry. Kulit <laughs> na tagline ko. Anyway, that's all for today. See ya! Bye!